For nearly two decades, Apple has led the field in photo management software. Back in 2002, they introduced iPhoto, and now today they offer Apple Photos on your Mac and your iPhone and other iOS devices. talk about whether or not Apple Photos is one of the best solutions for managing your family photo collection. Hi, I'm Molly Bartelt, a photo estate planner and the owner of Pixology. We are your go-to experts in motivation and education on photo saving apps, tools, and software. Definitely check out the notes below if you want to see links and resources to the information I talk about. And if you need inspiration and motivation yourself to keep going on your photo projects, hit subscribe. So far, I've reviewed nearly a dozen options for managing your digital pictures. See the link up above if you need to know more about those other options. I personally have an iPhone, a MacBook Pro, and an iMac, so I rely pretty heavily on Apple Photos for my digital photo management. Leave a comment below, let me know if you have any Apple device and what you've got and how you like using them for managing your pictures. When you do use multiple Apple devices, from your computers to your iPads or iPhone, you definitely need to make sure that they are registered under the same Apple ID. This allows you to sync your pictures from one device to the other. Let's do a quick overview of the Apple Photos interface on your Mac. We are looking at my photos and I love right at the bottom, you can see that I have almost 21,000 photos and quite a few videos. On the left hand side we call this the navigation pane and you can take a look at the different options that you can view your pictures. Right now I'm in the library view which shows all of the pictures chronologically. If I clicked across the top here I could look at them by year by months and even by days. I'll go back to the all photos view. On that navigation pane, you have choices to view your photos and memories is just something that Apple produces for you and gives you like snapshots of different days. Like, look at this, this is from 2009. Memories is nice because you can hit the play button and it will play a slideshow of the different pictures <laughs> from that day. So moving on, there is the people tab and this is where you can see how facial recognition works. Next up is places. If your location is on in your camera settings on your phone, you'll find that you have pictures from around the United States where you've been. Favorites is nice because if you ever click that heart uh, icon on a photo, you can favorite it and then it will be in your favorites view. Next up is import, so it'll show you the last pictures that you imported in. That might be from a camera card you connected to your computer or maybe you airdropped pictures. Recently deleted, self-explanatory. Then you have different albums and they're grouped by media types. So all of your videos are grouped together, your live photo, slow-mo, all the selfies. That is system generated, so Apple does that for you. Your shared albums are those albums that people have shared with you or you have shared with them. The most important area is my albums and we'll talk about that more in a moment but you can see I have folders and albums listed here. So let's close that up and keep it very simple looking. In the library view there's just one last thing I want to show you and I'm going to just click this flower photo. In this view, you can work with your picture. So we have the information button where I could add a caption or keywords or faces if I had people in the picture. I could share a picture through the shared albums, mail or messages or airdrop. Here's that heart again. 
I can rotate the picture if for some reason it wasn't going the right way. There is this auto enhance that you can click if you want. And then here under edit is the full editing tools that you might need from retouching to red eye and all sorts of editing options for you. That is a quick overview of the interface of the Photos app on a Mac computer. When reviewing photo management programs, there are four essential features that I like to touch upon. These are the four things that are very important to me when I think about using a photo management program. The first thing is, is I think you should be able to organize pictures in folders or albums. And Apple is great. Apple Photos offers you the ability to organize in folders and in albums. So let's look. I'm going to go to my albums here. Individual photo albums hold pictures. All right. So you can see these large squares here represent albums. When I have four little squares in a big square, this represents a folder. So let's just expand this and we're looking at the folder of 1950s, 1960s, and 1970s. When I click in there, now I have three albums of photos. And I really like how that works. It helps you kind of segment your photo collection in a really simple manner. So you can see I have these three decades together in one folder, these two decades in another folder, and then let's go into the 2000s and I have my pictures organized by year. So in order to create an album or a folder, you just hover over the area that you want to create it. So let's go to my albums and I click the plus button. And the two main choices I'm looking at here are album or folder. And if you really wanna take advantage of Apple Photos strengths, creating a smart album might be something you wanna to explore too. So Apple Photos has the ability for you to organize your pictures in folders and albums. That's a thumbs up. The next feature that I think is essential is you need to be able to edit the metadata of a photo. So here I'm selecting this picture of my mom and dad back in 1971. And I'm going to hit that I button. And here I can see that the date was actually changed already, October 21st, 1972. I've already got a tag. I'll add one more for my mother and it pre-fills it even. And this was taken outside of my grandmother's home in Stratford. And then if I wanted to change the date of this picture, let's say I had it a little wrong, because I think it was actually 1971, I can go up to image and adjust date and time, and we're gonna just change it to 1971. And now it's changed, and it just appears a little earlier. And when I export the picture, we are going to make sure to export the most current metadata and we'll just save it to my desktop. And we can see that the metadata definitely transferred with the picture as it was exported out of the photos program. So that's a second thumbs up. The third essential feature is to be able to back up your pictures. If you've turned iCloud on, your photos are being uploaded into Apple's cloud storage and stored there. If you've run out of storage, I highly encourage you to pay for the extra storage. It's 99 cents a month for 50 gigabytes, and that's well worth the peace of mind to know that your photos are backed up. In addition, if you are using Time Machine on your Mac, you also have the backup to an external hard drive, which I really encourage. We always say you want your original collection to be backed up in the house and one backup outside of the house. The fourth essential feature is I have to like using the program and I do like using Apple Photos. I think it is really powerful and I can do a lot of things with it. So overall, I give Apple Photos four out of four on my review scale here. 
And that's if you use a Mac computer and an iPhone, or an iPad for that matter, together. Apple Photos by itself on an iPhone, there's some challenges with it, and I will address that in a future video. If this was helpful, give the video a thumbs up, and that's it for now. Thank you so much until we see you the next time.